to contribute to the well-being of its citizens. We will show you a bus system that is fast, efficient, reliable, moves as fast as a subway. In a nutshell, what Curitiba has achieved is remarkable. 75% of Curitiba's population rides the bus each day, compared with 5% in Los Angeles. Curitiba's capacity and performance exceed that of the most heavily used light rail line in America, the Blue Line in Los Angeles, and it matches that of many subways. How did Curitiba create their bus system? This video is organized around the four steps that we think are most critical in the development of the transit system. One, remove everything that slows down a bus. Two, create a hub and spoke system where local buses feed into high-speed subway-like buses. Three, coordinate land use legislation with transit investments. And four, build the system over time with whatever resources and technology are available. Now, let's take a look at the first step in more detail. Remove everything that slows down a bus. Curitiba improved bus service by establishing exclusive bus lanes and giving buses signal priority. Dwell time was reduced by collecting fares before boarding and by using multiple doors and a level platform for getting on and off the bus. The whole operation takes about 15 seconds or less versus 30 seconds or more on conventional bus systems. Now, let's take a look at the second reason, creating a hub and spoke system where local buses feed into high-speed subway-like buses. This route map shows the Curitiba bus system. Currently, there are about 38 miles of exclusive lanes, 155 miles of direct, 186 miles of feeder, and 104 miles of interdistrict routes that interconnect 25 terminals. This chart shows the different kinds of buses. Curitiba has over 2,000 buses and serves 1.6 million people a day. They vary in length, capacity, color, and function. Vehicle capacity is matched to meet demand. Large buses for the high volume routes, medium-sized buses for direct routes, and smaller ones for the lower volume feeder routes. Buses are really color-coded. As you can see, the system is made up of red, silver, green, and yellow buses. At any of the terminals, people can easily transfer from one bus to another without a charge. There are also public telephones, post offices, newspaper stands, and small retail facilities to serve customers. However, there are no park and ride lots at any of the terminals. Now, let's take a look at the third step in more detail. The key to Curitiba's success was the coordination of land use legislation and transit investments. In 1965, Curitiba adopted a radical master plan that was conceived by planners and architects. The master plan called for channeling new growth along five development corridors and for turning the downtown into a pedestrian area. The goal was to move as many people, not vehicles, along the corridors. Thus, transit was the backbone of the corridors. Over the next 20 years, the city gradually proceeded to implement this master plan. A commonly asked question is how did Curitiba move all of the traffic off the street? The answer is the trinary road system. In the center are two restricted lanes dedicated to buses flanked by two local one-way streets that function as auxiliary lanes. Running parallel to the central axis, a block away, are high-capacity one-way streets heading in opposite directions. Curitiba's innovative use of zoning within and along the trinary road system has created a wedding cake pattern of densities. Housing is allowed in all blocks, but office and retail uses are only allowed in the transit corridor. The location of both housing and commercial uses along the corridor ensures continual, balanced, two-way movement on the transit lines, since both origins and destinations are located along the corridors. By guiding urban development, as opposed to leaving it up to private developers, the trinary road system has helped keep land speculation in check. Now, let's talk about the fourth and final step. Curitiba's transit system was built over time with whatever resources and technology were available. This chart shows the beginnings of the system in the 1970s, when just two exclusive lanes were built with some feeder lines, and moves up to the 1990s, showing the system as it exists today with five exclusive routes, many feeder routes, some direct routes, and a few peripheral routes. Curitiba did not let the system become stagnant. The city continually enhanced the system. 
For example, the silver direct buses were started in 1991 because it was determined that the red buses weren't getting downtown fast enough for some riders. Currently, Curitiba is studying the possibility of converting some of the exclusive lanes to rail operations. In conclusion, Curitiba was successful because the city began with a strong vision, built only what they could afford, and has continually improved the system. Pedestrians and transit are given the priority, not vehicles. Sheer determination, cleverly designed programs, willingness to experiment and take risks, and a desire to get things done quickly and economically were key to the success of Curitiba's transit system.